It is Devin from the Maniology team back with another weekly live every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. You can find us here on another nail stamping journey where we're showing you tutorials, techniques, and hacks, and I'm so glad you could join us. So yeah, hey everybody, how are you? I have Tiana helping out on the live today, so everyone say hi to Tiana. Ooh, I see people saying that they got the new stamper. Okay, so today's topic is not your basic base coat. We'll get into that in a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that you guys know if you're digging our live streams and enjoy being part of the vibes here, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. We're all about creativity, stamping, realness, and awesome nail art. Don't miss out. Subscribe. Let's hang out every Tuesday and drop your thoughts in the comments below about, you know, any topics you'd like us to cover or if you just have a question. We love chatting with you. Also, I have some very, very exciting things to share. We are kicking off a new manicure challenge. Whoops. <laughs> um, and this series is different themes each month. Beginners to advanced nail stampers are welcome. Technique is not the main priority. We want to challenge you in your creativity and storytelling through nail art. So this month's theme, I believe, is for Earth Day. So anything nature-inspired, please go ahead and submit your designs. Um, we're accepting it now until April 15th. So I believe you want to submit a 30 second clip showing your manicure and tell us a story and also get creative with it. So you can write the story in the caption, you can do a voiceover for the story, it doesn't matter. But we wanna know where is your inspiration coming from? Um, why did you choose this manicure? Like, tell us, we love hearing it. And also, there's something else I wanted to say about that. Um, oh yes, the main, the way it's going to be judged, because I know everyone's going to like say like, why should I bother joining, especially if I'm newer to stamping? No, the hugest criteria for these manicure um, submissions is storytelling and creativity. So when we like kind of look at our point system and how we're going to do it, the main meat that we're going to be judging on is, yeah, your creativity and your storytelling abilities. So don't be intimidated. Please join. We love seeing your submissions. And get creative. Design your manicures with trees, flowers, stars, animals, any earthy colors or anything nature related. And for full details, you can go to www.maniology.com backslash challenge. So now let's get into the live. Okay. Hi everyone. That was so much to share. I wanted you guys to know all the things. We have lots of good surprises um, that we're going to give away for that manicure challenge. I heard something like a $50 gift card for maniology. As we all know, that can go a very, very long way. So take a look and make sure you participate. Um, today we're talking about Maniology's many base coats, specifically our color tinted base coats, because there is so much fun things to do with base coats that personally, I don't ever really usually use the base coats as a base coat. I love using them for many, many other things. And today I'm going to show them, uh, show you guys some tricks that you can do. Hi. Hi, Christine. Hi, Grandma Mimsy. I'm so happy you all are joining today with us. Lena, you didn't miss much. We are talking about base coats. So let's start off with these base coats that we have. I already swatched them ahead of time so that way you guys kind of see. Then I could jump into the art shortly after. So this is our first base coat and this is called the Calcium Rich Milk Base Coat. So this one has a milky white texture. You can see it right here. It's actually pretty opaque, so it's a good base if you are trying to fill ridges, if you are you know, wanting to hide your free edge, or if you're looking for a neutral base. So for example, sometimes people want to do like um, sponge on color, like a tie-dye color. 
this is nicer than having to paint a white base over your base coat. So you can skip that step, use this base coat, and then immediately start sponging on your color. I will show you a little bit about that, how you can use this, because this one is not as transparent as others in our lineup, but this is also very useful. So instead of having to do a regular base coat and then painting a white and then doing your like sponge gradient over, you could just paint this and then just do a sponge gradient makes it a lot easier okay the second one we're going to cover is our concealing base coat so originally this base coat is created to help hide temporarily hide stained yellowed nails so if you look at it it's kind of a cold purpley pink color because the color is cold leaning it actually cancels out the yellowing in the nail and it makes the nail appear not stained. So this is a good option once you're trying to, you know, hide maybe some discoloration, especially if you use like a really uh, strong red and it stained your nails, or you use nail polish all the time and for some reason you got a little bit of color staining, then you can use something like this and this will help cancel that out. And I applied one coat here. So you can see it's a little bit thicker. You can still see through the tip. I used a clear tip, but it has a nice strong color coverage um, and still gives a little bit of sheerness. This color is good on all skin tones. So don't think that like, oh, I'm lighter skin or darker skin. Is this gonna look good on me? This is created to look good on everyone. Any of these semi-sheer colors are going to look good on all sorts of skin tones, so I wouldn't have to worry too much about that. So that's our second base coat. That's why we call it the concealing base coat, because it's almost like concealer, but for your nails. <laughs> it is concealer for your nails. The second one is our brightening base coat, and then this is kind of more of a beige color, and you can see it right here. So in comparison to our calcium rich milk base, you can see that there's definitely a color difference. This one is a lot whiter while this one has more of that beige tint. Again, this color will look good on everyone. It doesn't matter what your skin tone is. It's gonna look good because it is semi-sheer and it's just a very neutral color. Both of these are great for if you for example, don't have time to do your nails, but you want your nails to look at least like a little polished and clean, you can just slap on a coat of this and then top coat it and you're good to go. It's also perfect if you work for a job that maybe, you know, they're really strict about showing nail art or having different nail colors, then you can still have something protecting your nails and also have a polished finished look. The next one that we're going to show you is the Calcium Rich Blushing Base Coat. I love this one. It is a very, very sheer pink. You can take a look here. I feel like you can't tell with my skin because my hand is pink and the base coat is pink, but I think you can see it better here against the white. So it's very sheer and that is good to give your nails a healthy tint. So when would you need this? If you're doing French. Perfect for a pink and white French. Um, I would apply one coat of this and then stamp white French over it and you're done. There's also some other ways that I'm going to show you how to use this. And then we're going to go over our 7-in-1 potion base coat. I have been using this a lot lately. For those of you who have been watching our live, you've seen me talk about it numerous times in many different ways. I'm going to show you some fun art stuff that you can do with this. And this is what it looks like with one coat. It is very, very sheer, especially in comparison to our milk base. So let me show you in the bottle. This one is a lot more opaque and this one is so sheer. There are a million fun things you can do with this and I'm very, very excited to show you. So where do we even get started? I think we'll get started from easiest. So now that we applied our milk base coat, this is the perfect time for you to do a little sponged background design. So give me one second, everybody. I realized I only had one polish color. I thought I had another one with me, but of course, silly me, I was not prepared. So. Okay, 
I'm back everyone. So we're gonna be doing a quick little sponge gradient. So again, normally if you do a sponge gradient over a clear base, let me see if I have another clear tip to show you. If you do a sponged gradient on a nail, because the polish or like a sponge tie-dye, which is basically what I'm gonna be doing, because you're doing such thin layers of polish, it's hard to get really nice coverage on the first try. Um, so usually people will paint their nail with a lighter color, like white or let's say for example, blue, they might use blue because I'm using blue and purple. And then they would go ahead and sponge on over that colored solid cream base. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna bother with it. As you all know, I'm very impatient. And let me show you what happens. You see how light the color is, it's actually not much color because it's such a thin application. I think my sponge dried out a little bit too because I was talking so much. So I'm just gonna load it up a little bit more. So when you first apply it, it's very, very light and that's normal. So that's part of the reason why people will go ahead and apply something solid underneath so that way they can hide that. Okay, now we have to get rid of the excess. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Even this, you can tell it's very light. So that's part of the reason why having a white base underneath or having a blue base underneath really helps. Because now, look at that, I can already have a really nice, smooth, pretty kind of tie-dye gradient. And I don't have to do the traditional base coat colored solid cream base and then going in with my gradient or tie-dye I keep getting it confused my sponged my sponged colors um, I can just go immediately into doing the sponged colors so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply a little more yeah and that's it Done. That was a very, very simple, easy way to immediately start doing a sponge base without having to wait and do multiple layers. So that's the first way that you can use this calcium rich milk base coat. Okay, the second technique that I wanted to show you is using our... Oh, there's so much things that I want to show you guys and so many things that I want to do. Okay. I'm going to use this one. So one way that you can use this base coat is, again, we talked about just doing it like this and then painting your top coat and being done with it. If you want a very clean, simple, polished look, especially if you have a very strict job that doesn't allow you to have like a bunch of design nails. Um, another way that you can use this, and this is something very simple to do, this pink base looks so good paired with these polishes from the Sunray collection. So you can go ahead and just apply it and then do one coat over. And look at how pretty that is. It's just something simple and easy to do so that way you have really pretty nails without a lot of effort. Or if you want, this could be a perfect base to go ahead and now do a bunch of reverse stamping or whatever you want. It just looks so good together. For the calcium, or sorry, for the brightening base coat, I actually didn't have any art planned today for it, however, Another way you could use this is, let me show you. 
So you would use this as your base, and then you could stamp a lacy pattern over it. So you could use Bam White, and then go ahead and stamp that directly over your base coat. So these base coats are kind of working like a color and I mean, that is exactly what they are. They're a tinted base. So it eliminates having to apply color over a clear base coat and you can just go right into doing your art. Like that, and then you have some really, really pretty lacy nails. Do I need a base coat if I'm stamping dip powder? Um, no, you probably don't need a base coat. I wouldn't, yeah. If you wanted to, you could for the color, um, but it's not necessary. If you're doing this on your natural nails, I highly recommend using a base coat because base coat helps ensure that the polish that you're stamping with has something to cling to. So that is your second look. Okay, these two looks are going to be a little bit more complex, but in a good way. Because I'm sure you guys are like, I already know how to do all this other stuff. Show me the, the more tricky things. So we're using BMXL 476, very, very popular plate. I already painted my base with this really cute calcium rich blushing base coat. And now let's get into it because I know you guys wanna see the fun stuff. Okay, you're gonna take Bam White and we're gonna select this design. Part of the reason we're gonna select this design is because it looks kind of like rose quartz. So pick it up and then I'm only gonna, well, I'm gonna stamp over the whole nail like that. Now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna take our calcium blushing base coat and also our seven one seven in one base coat. And we are gonna go ahead and cover parts of the nail with that. have a little fuzzy. And then once this dries, we're going to go ahead and stamp again with that design that we used earlier. And then we're going to have like a cute rose quartz inspired look. So while that dries, we're going to go and do this next nail because <clears throat> that's going to take a minute. Okay, for the next nail, there's so many things I wanted to show you all. Um, I am going to use our little sponge tool. So this is a double-ended sponge tool that Maniology sells and it is perfect for radial gradients. This is another way that I found that you can use a 7-in-1 potion base coat and it is so awesome. Okay, clean off your sponge, use your sticky stamper sheet to remove any kind of excess dust or whatever that you have. Sometimes there's like little things that stick to it. 
Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to apply your 7 and 1 base portion and apply a very generous amount. So, after you apply a generous amount, go ahead and take a cream color and draw a little oval. So you can just turn the brush to the side and do something like that. From here, we're going to take it and just kind of blur it out like that. And then you're gonna go ahead and start stamping it on, or not stamping, sponging on the purple. So we are building a very soft radial gradient. And this seven in one acts as a slip layer. So you can go ahead and just apply more and it helps to diffuse that cream polish so that way we can have a nice radial gradient. It's very hard to achieve a radial gradient um, with regular polish. You can do it with a sponge, but it's hard to be able to control the circular focal point, especially when you cannot see it. Unlike a stamper that you can see through, you can see exactly where you're placing it. With radial gradients, since you kind of can't control it, if you use a regular sponge, like a square sponge or this type of sponge, it's so hard to get it perfectly centered and to know what you're doing. This I found was the easiest method. And then also using that um, base coat, the seven in one base coat, it helps you to get a really, really nice kind of coverage. So you can see that we have a perfect radial gradient that's starting to form. Over here, I might have touched the center just a little bit too much, and I can go ahead and fix that by adding more. But this is a very, very easy way to get that effect. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more polish to this. And this is my hack for a seamless radial gradient. So you just go ahead and apply the seven in one all over the place and then you're just going to do one little line right down the center. Tap out the excess. And then go ahead and sponge it on. And look at that, that looks flawless. And it has such a soft looking kind of fade out to the edges. And I love the fact that I was able to use a seven in one as the base as well, because it helps to kind of create that really um, feathery kind of blurred effect. And here is a tip that I did last week using that same technique. You can see it just seem it's a very seamless fade. Okay, let's try. I'm like, should I try one more time? I think I'm okay. No, I can't help myself. So now after you go ahead and apply your, you know, center color, you grab your seven and one again. And now we're just going to apply a coat right over it. And doing this helps to kind of smooth out any bumps, make this very dreamy and soft. It's a perfect radial gradient. So that is another way that I like using the seven and one. Okay, I think we can go back to this. Oh, wait, maybe not yet. A few more seconds. 
For those of you who are curious about the butterfly nail art that I'm here, I did a live about two weeks ago. And let me see if I have the tip holder. So this is a way that I did the radial gradient and it was using the 7-in-1 potion base coat. So radial gradients are so popular too right now. Um, they've been trending for like, I don't know, at least a year or two. And this is the easiest way to do it with polish, regular polish. Okay, let me show you another way that you can use this plate. So I already painted like a super dark navy blue color on this tip earlier. This is the color Cosmos. And we're going to go ahead and use this again. Radial gradient. Radial gradient, Christine. <laughs> Not radial gradient. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab white. And we're just going to take this little line here. I'm going to remove all this excess stuff because I don't need it. I don't think I even need this. Okay. So. that away okay so this kind of looks like a thunderbolt now we are going to go ahead and cover it with a little bit of our seven in one. So you take a little bit of the seven in one and a detail brush. And you're going to paint it over what looks like a lightning bolt. Did I say thunderbolt? That's not, that's not a thing, is it? It's lightning bolt. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I am trying to focus, do the live. You know the deal. <laughs> so before I color the rest of it, let me see if I can zoom in, actually. I wonder if you guys can kind of see that. I can see it in person, but it might be a little bit harder to see on the camera. So this line here, this short line, I did not cover it with that 7-in-1 base coat. But this other long line here, I did cover it with the 7-in-1 base coat. Now what that does is it kind of blurs that lightning bolt and it makes it look like it's glowing. So whenever you look at photos of lightning, oh there, this kind of helps make it a little stronger. Whenever you look at photos of lightning, you always notice that there's like a glow around the lightning bolt because for obvious reasons, it's giving off light, especially um, because it's usually during nighttime that we can see it really well. And it's a dark kind of background for this gorgeous strike of light. So when that happens, we see a glow around it, and this is a perfect way to get the glow. 
Yeah, I wish you all could see this in person because it's pretty cool. It's a lot stronger of an effect. Oh, there. You guys can see it now. So you see, I didn't touch this line here. But this long line, I did touch. And you can see that it has like a little haze and glow around the edge. So this is another way that you can use the 7-in-1. So now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of add it there and you can see it kind of creates that halo effect. And I think I've showed this technique when we had our weather themed Manny by Me, but that was quite a while ago. Yes. This method, <clears throat> Liz mentioned, this is a great method for um, neon sign effect. That is correct. This is a great method if you're trying to create any sort of like glowing effect with the nail art. This will help you get that look. The Moonbeam Collection, I don't know if it would just because the shimmer, you could try it, but I think the shimmer might be, if you're trying to create lightning specific, the shimmer might be a little distracting, depending which, what kind of look you're going for. I think it could work, but it just depends what kind of effect you want. This one, part of the reason I like it is because it is so thin, like even when I move it in the bottle, you can see it has a very, very... Um, light color tint and that's perfect for this so that is another way that you can use the base coat okay let's see if we can go back to this design i think we can and i'm also going to want to clean off the plate because i want to layer some more so using bam white i'm going to just pick up that center line again. I'm gonna clean off all the stuff I don't want, which is all of this. Then I think I'm gonna go diagonally in the opposite direction. So that way some of the design has that kind of pretty pink effect and some of it still has like a white milky effect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this blushing base coat and do a really thin layer over some of those white parts. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go back with my 7-in-1 base coat and then also add some light areas And you see, it starts to kind of come together. And now I've created a really cute, very simple rose quartz effect just using two base coats and BAM white stamping. If you wanted to take it up to the next level, you can always go ahead and add a little bit of Fish scale. So, for example, you could just go ahead and add like a little stroke here or there. Yeah. 
You see how simple that is? Very, very easy way to kind of get that rose quartz effect with stamping polish, um, with Bam White stamping polish, our Sunray collection fish scale B476, and also these two base coats. Yes, there is a lot of versatility with our base coats. If you just kind of give it a try and play around with it, there is one more, one or two more things that I want to show you all with these base coats. So the next thing is going to be from our most recent plate, MXM125. This is from our Money By Me subscription plates. So... I want to get these cute heart clouds. When you create a cloud, or when you're even looking at clouds, clouds don't have um, a really strong white color. There are parts of the cloud that look very opaque, but then there's also parts of the clouds that look really sheer. And how do we create that effect? you can create a semi-sheer white effect using clear polish and white, or you could use our base coats because it's the perfect opacity. So I'm gonna do a mix of the calcium rich milk base and the seven in one base coat. So I'm just gonna dab a bunch onto a little palette. Also, take a look in comparison. The 7-in-1 looks a little yellow, but when you actually work with it, it doesn't create that yellow cast that you see. Make sure I close all my bottles over here because we don't want any spills. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my clouds. I'm gonna mix those two whites together a little bit. So that way when I pick it up, it kind of randomly covers certain parts. So if I had filled in my cloud with just the bam white it wouldn't exactly look right and then also if you end up filling in your cloud with bam white what do you stamp in black black doesn't kind of give you that soft fluffy cloud look a black outline seems too harsh right so if i use something like this i can still create the effect that I want. So now when you look at the clouds, they kind of have that semi-sheer effect that we we're hoping for, but you still have a strong white outline. So another outline color that you could use for the clouds would be, um, what is it called? It You could use gray, but even that, sometimes you have to be careful. Luna would be another really, really good color to use for a cloud outline. But even that, would you want a solid white cloud? It doesn't exactly give you, again, the feeling that you get when you look at clouds and you just kind of gaze at the sky. Weightlessness. Yes, it doesn't give you that weightlessness feeling. Tiana's over here helping me. <laughs> so once this dries, we're going to go ahead and stamp it on and you can see how cute it is. Then you'll be able to see that we can, um, the base colors are going to show through. You can even see it now when I'm holding just the stamp over, sorry, the stamper over this base. You can see the purple coming through, which is what we want. So while that dries, I think I had one more design that I wanted to show you all. 
Let me see. I wanted to show you this over this base. Let me check if it is. I think it's dry enough. So I think this lace design is perfect. You, if you wanted, you could do just the seven in one base coat, stamp your lace design, which I'm gonna stamp in bound white again. Mm, maybe I'll do this one. I want something that has a focal, a focal point. Uh, I don't know. I'm torn between this design or this design. Do you guys have any preferences? One or two? Type in the comments for me. It's between these two. I don't know, right? Wait, I said one or two, right? <laughs> one or two. Two, okay, everyone's saying two. All right, let's do two then. Okay, I saw two wins, two wins. I saw everyone talking about two. Oh, where's my stamper? Oh, dang it, my stamper's busy. <laughs> uh, I did not prep myself for a second stamper. Okay, we're gonna have to redo that one. So I'm still gonna go with two because everyone asked for two, but I have to clean off my stamp design. I forgot that I was using the other stamper for reverse stamping. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna go ahead and try and line this up. So now, <clears throat> let's see, where's a better, I think this is better background. Um, you can see that we have that sheer lacy effect. Again, that is the goal. Lace is semi-see-through. We want to have a semi-see-through lace design. So the seven and one is perfect for that. Because, oh there, I feel like you can see it now when I do that. Um, it just has the slightest tint of color, but not too much. Depending how uh, sheer or how opaque you want it, you could always go ahead and apply another coat of this over the top if you just want to soften that. So I'll go ahead and do that so you guys can see. Kind of makes me think of eyelet. So that is another way that you can use our 7-in-1 at. Now let's take a look. Oh, whoops. Let's see if this dried. I mean, I still see a fingerprint. Do I have patience? Maybe I should wait a second. <laughs> We already waited so long. Maybe waiting a couple more seconds isn't going to hurt this. So far, does anyone have any questions about our base coat? Do they not smudge? Oh, they do smudge a little bit, I think. So if you are going to stamp and then apply more polish on top, if you want to be safe, you can always use a smudge free in between. I run things wild, <laughs> so chansom, as we say locally, is how I run things. Um, now, for something like this, 
honestly, I think it's fine if you don't apply a top coat because the whole point is the fact that you're trying to get like this glowy, semi-smudgy look. So I don't think it's necessary. Um, for something like this, if you are the type where you have to do several coats over and over again, then you're probably going to want to apply a top coat before you go ahead and top it off with more polish. Um, because I did this in like, I think maybe what, one to two coats, really quick coats, I didn't have to worry. And I also didn't drag my brush so much, so I didn't need to worry about smudging. Now, you might be the type where if you have more of a heavy hand or you're prone to smudging things, then you could either wait a while for this to dry before you go ahead and apply another coat of this, or you can just use the smudge free as insurance. So let's see, is this dry enough? I think this is dry enough. Perfect. Yay, okay, so you can still see through the clouds a little bit. You can see that purple base coming through and that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted there to be a hint of white, but not so much that it overtakes all the hard work you did underneath this stamped design. We still wanted to be able to see that really pretty kind of soft, dreamy, blue-purple sky that I made. So that is pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you all. I think I showed you many ways. Oh, another base coat combination that I love. So I showed you doing it this way. This is really cute. I've done this one and this one over my nails. Just one coat of this and one coat of this. It looks really cute too. It's, <clears throat> excuse me. It's not as opaque as this and it's kind of helps intensify some of the shine inside here because this has like a gold red shimmer and because this base is like pink it helps intensify the pink and red inside this color so yeah i think that's everything tiana did i miss anybody's questions or yeah what is the pink this one's name again <laughs> this is sandbar b475 and then we were using calcium rich blushing base coat so if i had to pick which my favorite base coats are out of these let let me show you the lineup Oh, D had a lot of fun. She got all sorts of good, good stuff. If I had to pick, let me lay them all out between all of the base coats and which ones I use the most. These three. I use these three the most. Um, but if you ask me what my favorite is, these two are my favorite. I think because I love how much art abilities there are with these. This one I like. This works also very well for a soft gradient. So for example, if you don't want to have to sponge a gradient the traditional way where... Here. This is going to be kind of hard because this nail tip already has a color on it. But... If you had a clear nail or just like a plain nail, you don't need to use a sponge to sponge this out. You can literally just do a really thin coat and just go at it with firm strokes like this. And already I'm starting to build the perfect like pink ombre. I'm going to go at it again. If 
Voila. Almost perfect gradient. So that's another way that you can use the concealing base. I've used it this way many, many times. Um, I'll do something like this and then I'll throw a coat of moonbeams over it and it just looks so, so good together. Also moonbeams pearl, pearl expedition, pearl expedition and this base coat, the concealing base coat are a great combination because they both, ha both have um, like a blue tint. Like this has a blue tint to it or a cold tint, and then Pearl Expedition has blue purple shimmer, and it pairs really well with this. So yeah, these three are definitely my favorites. These two just absolutely love. I use them frequently. I use them in a lot of art, a lot of different things. You've seen them so many times and you guys don't even realize. Yeah, Luna, that's smart. Just to protect your art, it's good to apply as much free. Again, I live my life very wildly <laughs> i'm just doing all sorts of things over here that are not as safe <laughs> but i also have like 10 years of experience so i i feel pretty comfortable in taking risk okay well thank you so much for joining us everyone it was a very fun live like usual so happy we could be together and I will see you guys in about two weeks because I think Tiana is going to be on our next live. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye.